Hello, good morning viewers. In this tutorial, we are going to find a solution to this equation, which is a second order linear non-homogeneous differential equation using variation of parameters, but we are going to apply the idea of Ron's scheme. All right, I will show you step by step on how it works. The first step, you know, the general solution will be of the form y, which is a function of x equals y sub h plus y sub p, where y sub h is the solution to the homogeneous differential equation that can be attained by setting the right hand side to be equal to zero, while y sub p is the particular solution, and that is where we are going to apply the idea of Ryan's skin. All right, let's start with homogeneous differential equation. We are going to take this equation y double prime plus y and set it to be equal to zero. Next, we are going to transform this equation into an auxiliary equation, which is r squared plus one equal to zero. Now we are going to solve for the roots of this quadratic equation, r squared equal to negative one, and r finally is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative one. And you know that the square root of negative one is i, so we have plus or minus i. But remember that the general form is r equal to alpha plus beta i or r equal to alpha minus beta i. But since alpha is zero, therefore we have r equal to zero plus beta is one so we have just i o r equal to zero minus i so you can see that alpha is equal to zero while beta is equal to one and our general solution for this homogeneous differential equation y of h is now equal to e alpha x multiplied by a constant cos of beta x plus another constant sine of beta x. But alpha is zero, therefore the whole of this is gone. Therefore the general solution for this homogeneous differential equation will be equal to a constant cos of beta is one, so we have only x plus another constant sine x. So this is the homogeneous solution. Let us go ahead and find the particular solution. For the particular solution, it is equal to u1, y1 plus u2, y2, where u is an unknown function of x that we are going to find out, but y1 is equal to cos x and y2 is equal to sine x from the homogeneous solution. Therefore, our particular solution becomes u1 cos x plus u2 sine x. All we have to do is to find u1 and u2, plug them back here to obtain the particular solution. But how can we obtain u1 and u2? That is where the idea of Roenskin comes to play. u1 is equal to the integral of w1 divided by w with respect to x and u2 is equal to the integral of w2 divided by w with respect to x I will show you how to find w, w1 and w2. So therefore, y sub p is equal to cos x multiplied by the integral of w1 divided by w with respect to x, then plus sine x multiplied by the integral of w2 divide by w with respect to x. All I have done 
is substituting u1 and u2 into this equation. So now let us go ahead and find w, w1 and w2. For w, it is equal to the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. Let us substitute them. Remember that y1 is equal to cos x and y2 is equal to sin x. Then y1 prime can be obtained by differentiating cos x, which is negative sin x. y2 prime can be obtained by differentiating sin x, which is cos x. So now we are free to take the determinant. This is equal to, we take this and multiply by this. We have cos squared x. Then we subtract. We take this and multiply by this. We have negative sine squared x. Negative negative is positive. So we have cos squared x plus sine squared x. And cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. Remember, this is an identity. All right, this is w. w is equal to 1. Now let us go ahead and find w1. w1 is equal to the determinant. Then we are going to replace the first column by 0 and f of x. While the second column remain constant, we have y2 and y2 prime. This is equal to 0. f of x, remember, it is equal to the right-hand side of our general equation, which we have here as secant x. But secant x is the same thing as 1 over cos x. So we have 1 over cos x. y2 remain sin x. Derivative of sine x is cos x, which is y2 prime. Now let us take the determinant. This is equal to, we take this, we multiply by this, that's equal to 0, then we subtract. We take this and multiply by this, we have sine x over cos x. Sine x over cos x. W1 finally is equal to negative sine x over cos x. I know it is the same thing as negative tan x, but just leave it like this. Then finally, we're going to find W2. This is the determinant. Now we keep the first column constant, which is y1 and y1 prime, then this one becomes 0 and f of x. This is equal to y1, remember, is cos x. Derivative of cos x is negative sine x. Then this is 0, and remember that this is 1 over cos x, which is our f of x. We take the determinant again. This multiplied by this is cos x over cos x, which is the same thing as 1. But let me just write it step by step. This is equal to cos x divided by cos x. Minus this time this is equal to 0. Minus 0. W2 finally is equal to 1. All right, we have obtained W, W1, and W2. Let us go ahead and substitute them back into this equation right here. So let me copy the equation. Y sub P is equal to cos X multiplied by the integral of 
W1 divided by W. What is W1? W1 is negative sine x divided by cos x. Negative sine x divided by cos x. Then we divide that by W. And what is W? W is equal to 1. So dividing that by 1 will not change anything. So we leave it that way dx plus sine x multiplied by the integral of w2 w2 is 1 w1 is 1 so all we have is 1 dx okay let's continue simplifying we have y sub p equals cos x multiplied by now we are going to take the integral of this but just observe that the numerator, which is negative sine x, is exactly equal to the derivative of the denominator. If you differentiate cos x, you are going to obtain negative sine x. And once you have a function that behaves like this, the integral of that is exactly equal to the natural log of the absolute value of the denominator, which is cos x. Then we continue plus sine x multiply by if you integrate 1 with respect to x, you're going to obtain x. So finally, y sub p is equal to, let me write this first, natural log of the absolute value of cos x multiply by cos x plus let me write this first x multiply by sin x so this is the particular solution but remember that the general solution for that equation which is y of x equal to y sub h plus y sub p so finally y of x c1 cos x plus c2 sin x then we add y sub p which is this we have the natural log of the absolute value of cos x multiplied by cos x then plus x multiplied by sin x and this is said to be the general solution for that differential equation. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye-bye.